Hi, Indie Society! Welcome back to the Indie Social Planet, and today we are checking out Deja Vu by Dreamcatcher, and I'm excited for this one because, a full disclosure, I have actually heard this song before and I have watched the music video. I remember hearing it and watching the MV all the way back when it was new, and I didn't know who Dreamcatcher was. This was the first time that I had heard of them. I think that this is the song where they really started to get more popularity. I think that this was when they really started to make a name for themselves in K-pop. So this is when I heard of them. I haven't listened to it since, I haven't watched the MV since, and I certainly didn't have any context for who they were or storylines or different imagery that they have over all of their, their songs and their MVs and stuff. I remember little things with the MV. I, I remember there being like, I don't know, floral imagery or fantasy fairy tale imagery. I'll probably remember more of it once I actually listen to the song and watch the MV, but I don't think I ever looked at the lyrics. I don't think I ever fully analyzed it because at the time, it was 2019, right? It was the time when K-pop really started to take over my life, which meant that I was following a lot of groups at that time. <laughs> Very impulsively, I was just taking new groups in like they were candy. And at that point, when I got to Dreamcatcher, I was like, I don't have the time or the capacity to really pay attention to them, which I guess is a good thing because now we're here. It could have been very different. So that's just to, to give a warning upfront that this isn't going to be my first time listening to the song. I don't remember it. I probably will remember more as I listen to the song, but I'm going to properly listen this time and analyze it and go through the different images and stuff because we're starting a new storyline stuff, which I'm very excited for. So we're going to be checking out the song first with lyrics and I can like fully listen to the song and really pick it apart because it has been a long time since I listened to it and then we'll get into the MV. I'm like my adrenaline is peaking because I'm so excited. Let's check out the song. I'm so excited. I just I feel like I'm getting into like a really iconic songs of Dreamcatcher with this next storyline, this next era, and I'm just so happy to be here. Ooh. I didn't expect like the piano really soft. Oh, Xi'an. Vocals. I don't remember this. Gayan. <laughs> Oh, okay, I love how subdued this is because I feel like what I remember of the song is I guess like the chorus where it's way more like rock inspired and it, there's like just a lot more like energy and like momentum happening with the chorus. I, I say that vaguely because I could not sing a single line or hum a melody of it <laughs> off the top of my head right now because that's been how long it's been since I heard the song. But like this with like a really soft vocals. I love it. Like really airy. They sound gorgeous. Gaian especially sounding gorgeous on her part. We have mentions of fog again, which makes me think of the ending of Nightmares. We're like transitioning into this, which I think is interesting since it's deja vu, which of course means like something that feels familiar but isn't. And I think that it's interesting that they're pulling from some of the images so far that are in the Nightmare story, pulling it into this one, feeling like there's something familiar about this. I think it's also quite a nice nod to the fact that they're starting a new era of them as Dreamcatcher. I'm assuming that they're going to be doing new things. I know from, I've seen some of the end of this with Vision and Bon Voyage, where I, I've seen some of the ending parts of it, where it does have a very different feel to it, a very different aesthetic to the stuff that happens in Nightmare. So it's, I feel like using Deja Vu is the main concept to the song is saying it's going to be something that's different, but it's still going to feel familiar to you. So even though it's something new, it's something that you haven't experienced before, there's going to be this undercurrent of familiarity. And I think that's really important of them saying we're going to do something that doesn't quite fit with what we did before, but it's not going to be drastically different. I don't know what the climate was for fans. Were you worried about this? Was it a moment where you're waiting between Nightmare where it ended and then Deja vu where the next story started. What was the vibe of being Insomnia during that time? Because I know with the most recent comeback with OOTD, there is this kind of feeling of 
unease, at least at the beginning of that comeback, where people were like not ready to let go of some of the previous stuff. And obviously OOTD is like a very different sound, very different concept. They're doing different stuff. So it was a bit polarizing in the fandom. So was there a similar thing? I'm pretty sure Deja Vu is one of our most popular songs. So obviously this is a song that is loved generally by the fans. But what was the feeling in between where you're like, you didn't know that this was about to come and you were like, worried because it feels almost like a reassurance to fans of saying yeah it's gonna be different but it's gonna feel familiar enough that it's not gonna be as scary maybe interesting like minimal production but like a lead single oh Hanta. Maybe that she said pain Okay, I know we're getting into it. <laughs> we're getting into it. It almost feels like now Deja Vu is almost more ominous. It feels say, like holding this pain. It's, like it's a new experience, but it has that underlying familiarity of struggle. This is something that has happened before in different contexts. I feel like maybe this, because I do know a little bit about the storyline that this is part of because I've gotten like the end of it <laughs> scene, Vision and Bon Voyage. I haven't like fully analyzed those and these in the context of the actual storyline. I just enjoyed them for what they were without like reading too much into the imagery in it because you have the apocalypse stories, right? So it's this feeling of impending doom and rising above it. And there is this desolation. So it, it almost feels like them saying you know, at the beginning of it, realizing that there's a problem and saying this is something that we keep repeating. Maybe this is a common thing. We keep making the same mistakes and it keeps hurting people in the same way. And it, it's feeling familiar deja vu even though it's a new experience it has similar undertones to previous mistakes maybe oh i want to hear that again <laughs> i love all the strings This is what I'm expecting to be more of. Oh. Look, Thami starting second versus, I feel like at this point I should be just aware. I should default that she's going to start the second verse and I should just prep myself for it and I'm never ready. It happens a lot. Okay, she usually starts the second verse and yet every time she's A or yeah or whatever, I panic because I was getting into the chorus and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to talk about what I wanted to say at the chorus. And then Dami's like, just to remind you, I'm your bias. I don't need the reminder. Okay, ma'am, I know. But I love that mixture of this huge wave of sound. There's like this choir sound in the back of it, very dark, these very distorted guitars. Obviously you have Xian go coming in with like her darker, just like really rich tone to her voice. And then contrasting that with Yuhen coming in, lightening up her voice a whole lot. I love that the majority of this song is this very light, almost like ballad feeling delivery in their vocals and like with the keys in the instrumentation, even though there is this like percussion going through through it, it feels very much like a ballad. It feels like a B-side. And then you have this crashing coming in with the chorus. Even though so I fallen now, this idea of crashing, right? Because you have all of this sound and all this overwhelm with all of it, the, the sonic landscape of the song. It feels very much like things getting chaotic, falling apart around you. And then all of it quieting into these moments of vulnerability, which I really like. A great transition into that lighter tone. Oh. I 
love that she delivered it with this really light tone too. I, again, this feeling of a ballad delivery to the song. It feels like the verses and everything else are like ballad. And then the chorus comes in and it's more of that rock inspired sound of Dreamcatcher. I love this. I hope this moment is a lie. I think that's so powerful. Wishing that this reality wasn't. It, it was just your mind playing tricks on you or someone's going to tell you that it, it isn't real. And then hoping it's an illusion. And it'll just pass hoping that this moment of pain or tragedy or whatever it is that's overwhelming you actually isn't real especially if it's something that feels like something you've gone through before deja vu again it feels like a repeat of something you've already done i don't want to do this again because i've done it and it sucked and i don't want to do it so i'm hoping that this is a lie that this is some kind of illusion that this is me just bringing up my past hurt my past pain and applying it to the present moment but it's not true and i love the vibrato she had here too it was really gorgeous Ooh, with late regrets, that's a good line too. might be my favorite part <laughs> like this hanung's line of the pre-chorus the drum mixing goes crazy I love Xuan doing that line. Her vibrato was so delicate that I love when she really lightens up her voice, really softens it. I love when she's full belt rocker mode because her voice is fantastic and it just, oh, it just cuts through the production so gorgeously. But there's something about the way that she lightens up her voice and maybe it's the contrast, the fact that she can do both. And I'm a little bit jealous. She has such a vulnerability to her voice when she lightens it up and there's so much emotion to it that oh, it's heartbreaking. And I love that she was the one to end off that chorus. Ooh. <sighs> Sua, like her voice sounds gorgeous there. I love that we're pulling back. Beautiful, like gorgeous moments where she digs into her chest voice a little bit more. But this idea of like all things I believed were true have covered me as lies. Oh, I, I just I love that image like before saying I want this to be a lie, I want this moment to be an illusion and to pass. And then having this where it's oh, the things that are true, I wish were lies. And the things that I thought were true turn out to not be real. And that reversal of those two things. And I think that's just like a really interesting image and like the covered me like obviously translation isn't going to be exact it's going to be a, an interpretation of the korean into english but i love this idea of like, covered in lies the, you can feel like the weight of them it doesn't feel that way when they're truths and you believe them and you're carrying them around and it, it feels like you you understand the world and then you find out their lies and there's this weight to them and suddenly you realize that they're all over you and it, it feels like being buried and i think that's a really powerful image Sounds gorgeous. Hmm. I like that image. Ooh, the guitars. Ooh, key change, I think.
Oh, I love the way that it's just like the piano and the other strings playing out. Interesting shift. Obviously a shift there being like, oh, you saved me. Someone reaching out to you and you taking their hand again, like the ray of light in the darkness. So then I'm assuming talking about each other and them being his group. It could also be about insomnia. It could be like them kind of finding their footing as Dreamcatcher because they've gotten long past redebuting and the struggles they're in and little did they know the kind of success that was going to be launched <laughs> after this point. So them talking about having that light and that helping them get through it and like them saying I'm going to keep trying for you and again that could be to the other members, that could be to fans, like giving them a purpose for continuing with what they're doing and struggling through and being able to get out of this place of feeling like they've fallen and can't figure out what to do next, like what's real and what isn't. But I just, I love the way that it has this feeling of a ballad, but mixed in with these moments of more of their kind of classic rock sound, but in this much more theatrical way than the stuff of the Nightmare. Again, I've heard some of their stuff later on, so I know that some of the sounds that they've done has that more theatrical feeling to it. But I'm sure that listening to this after everything with Nightmare was an experience. You have these ballad feelings to the song and it's a lead single, so that's a bit of a risk there in and of itself. Ballads usually aren't lead singles and they're a little bit of a harder sell, but and you already have a rock genre that you're pulling from. So the fact that this seems to be one of their songs that kind of put them into a spotlight, I think says a lot about their talent and like how well this song is put together. But having a more ballad sound and then having these like very epic, grand scale, almost orchestral feeling sounds to the chorus. Very characteristic, I think, of the stuff that they have done so far that I've heard of their newer stuff, but they didn't quite go this big in the stuff with Nightmare. So I bet it was a moment to, to listen to the song when it was new and the transition and their sound would have been really cool. But let's check out the MV. I don't think I'm ready for this MV. <laughs> I have vague memories of it because it had an impact on me when I first saw it. And I just remember being like, what? I was like, I, how, what, how did I not know about this group and their existence? So I'm just a little bit worried. Just a tad. Proceeds with caution. On a throne where she belongs. But maybe not with the dark fog. Good transition with the line though, like the lyrics. Ooh, good transition with that too. That's an image. Oh, I love that little rewind. And the confusion. Hang on, okay, this image, super powerful. Second, are we having another storyline with Jiu and Yehyun having something? Being a little bit antagonistic with each other? Because I don't know if I can take that again. I don't. I can't take the fact that they all look like princesses in this. What's that about? We have them isolated again. Because we have Handang with all these knights around her, which I think is really interesting. With the light pinks and this floral design. There's very soft imagery with her. And then having this very dark, ominous background with these suits of armor around her. And they're all turned towards her. So it feels more like antagonistic, aggressive, them guarding her. It feels like more like they're stopping her from leaving. And then we have Gahyun in this with almost like a garden, like the vines and stuff. Obviously, Yehyun with the throne room with almost these cathedral style windows, but it's empty. It's almost ruling over nothing, not having anything to rule over. I'm looking for... Do we have any other? Yeah. And then we have Sua in this foggy, dark, no place with the gates closing behind her. She's a floral print too. There's lots of flower imagery in this. Like, she looks confused. And I love the little rewind effect, and we have them smiling at each other. So it's almost like they were kind to each other, and now it's shifted? Because the building's literally, like, falling down around them. Ooh! Ooh, Jiu's where Handang was.
Shion, please. Ooh. Is it Yihun there too with the flowers? Because I think here with the sword again is Jiu. And then it seemed like Xian also knew what was going on because she was in with the blue wall hangings. And then we had Jiu laying down on the, I don't know, the table or whatever that Handang was on. Like they're all isolated. On the opposite sides of the table, she is gone. Oh, she's not in the with the flowers anymore. Oh, and it's all like broken. Interesting, it's like a reversal almost because it feels like she was more in the kind of like princess royalty feeling that Yuhyun had before and they were they were on different sides, right? And now we've switched them and it's almost like you giving fealty? It almost feels being knighted in some way, but she has a more modern aesthetic and we have the throne room in shambles we had before with the chorus coming in where the coloring changed and it was much brighter. I like the Thames with the reflection and the two of her and the one was skewed. There's fracturing of some kind. Okay, she's with the flowers now. Oh, in a circle around her. Reversal rolls? Isn't- Okay, so the, the outfit that she has at the table, here. Isn't that the outfit that she had when she was with the flowers? And then- this is the outfit that she had on when she was on the table with Han Dong. This is the outfit that she had with the blue wall hangings and it seemed like she passed to you. This is the outfit that she had on with the doors closing. And that's Dami. It's the only one who's- they're different from their other ones, I think. Yeah. And is Gaihan different? I feel like she is. Her outfit's different. Unless I am just not remembering. Maybe it's the same one, we just didn't see very much of it. So they're all like in the same outfits, except for these two. And it seems like they're in the room with all the knights where Han Dong was before. Is this the same room? Those are the windows, just set up differently, like it's not empty like it is later? Seems like she's noticing something. Oh, jeez, that's a look. Ooh, that's an interesting image with all the flaming swords. She's in the throne now. Gosh, she's lovely. Ooh, that's a cool image. Sword falling, Xi'an falling. I'm sorry, I was looking at all the imagery trying to pull apart the story and y'all are just like, body roll real quick. With the costume change? I don't think so. We're just passing by that. Sorry, I just saw something the choreo. Is it Dami? Yeah, Dami reaches forward with Xian. Well, only half of them are burning. Okay, so that's the outfit from the table. The butterflies? Why do I feel like Yihan's the bad guy again? <laughs> that smirk though? The power. I'm sorry, hold up. I'm gonna just need a few seconds with this. Is that Shia? Oh no, okay, I think that these outfits are part of the performance, like the dance video. And if Shia's gonna be out here looking like that, mm -mm, no, absolutely not. I am not ready for that. Not with these outfits. I have thoughts. I feel like there's just so much- I feel like I have to like rewatch it at some point. <laughs>
I definitely didn't remember that as much as I thought I would. The song or the music video, which I guess is a good thing for reaction purposes. But I feel like we have, we've isolated Jiu and Yuhen again as being one of the main pairs for the storyline. And I'm like, is, I'm just, look, I feel like I'm not ready to let go of the nightmare story. And I don't know how much of it overlaps. I don't know how much of it, is this the a real beginning of the new storyline or is this its own thing? I don't know. But if we're gonna be focusing in on Tiu and Yukan again, that I can't not have thoughts about the nightmare story. Cause in my head, that's part of it. And like, it feels like Yukan is the bad guy again. <laughs> she was kind of the villain in Nightmare. And I know that's because of the spider's curse and a bunch of other things. There are a bunch of reasons for why she was behaving the way that she was, but she was kind of the antagonist. She was kind of the reason that a lot of this bad stuff was happening. And I feel like that's what's happening again is it feels like she took the throne. And I feel almost like this story, the MV isn't in chronological order. We start at the end and then we get some of the context of why Yukan is sitting in the throne and why it's over this very dark, empty space. Again, ruler of none is because there's this desolation before that of taking power from Jiu and the other members not being around. After that, it, it almost felt like when Jiu was the one in power, there was more of them together. They were at this dinner table and they were all laughing and smiling. And then when that changed is when things started to go amok. I'm not sure. Obviously, if this is the beginning of a storyline, I'm not going to have a whole lot of context until I get into other stuff because, again, I've only seen some of the ending stuff and I'm like, I don't, I didn't look at that through the lens of like, I need to know what the story is because I was like, I don't need to fully analyze the imagery in Bon Voyage because I don't understand any of the context before that. But now that I'm going to this, I'm like, hang on, do I know some of this stuff and some of this imagery and other things? I don't know now, but loved it, loved the song. I wasn't expecting it to be so much of a ballad feeling to it and yet be like a lead single and yet have this very like orchestral epic sound to the chorus that I found really interesting. I guess I don't remember the song very well since that surprised me a bit. I didn't expect to start with the piano and these really soft vocals from them. Loved the MV. The MV is gorgeous. I remember the MV making my jaw hit the floor because it was like, why is this music video so beautiful? And this very fairy tale fantasy feeling to the whole aesthetic mixed in with these more modern styles, like them switching between these gowns and floral prints, but also floral imagery with, we had the flower crown, we had the flowers around Handang. There's all of these flower images, which I think is very interesting, very feminine, very soft. I think also temporary beauty. Flowers wither and die and they're not meant to last for a long time. They're not the main part of a plant. They're just for a brief moment <laughs> that they end up flowering. So it feels like this fleeting moment of beauty and vulnerability and maybe even tranquility before things take a turn. If I can go from some of the other visuals in it. Love the images of the rewinding of time and having the building crumbling around them. Just lots of really interesting things in this. I feel like I'm not going to be able to pull everything out first go around. Not technically first go around because I have seen it before, but first go around of really analyzing it and pulling it apart. But it does make me very excited to see what else is on this album and upcoming singles after this to link things together. But I hope you enjoyed listening to that along with me. You can click this playlist to go and see my previous reactions or you can subscribe to Miss Next time I post a dream reaction, I will see you in the next video. Bye.